Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the mental health problems. This is an issue that is often uh, being neglected by both developed and developing countries, although there has been an increasing burden over the years. So when we talk about common mental health disorders, we in general refer to two uh, major uh, disorders that include depression and anxiety. Although depression has some higher prevalence uh, in the general population as compared to anxiety. And globally, that's about 4.4% of the global population suffer from depression. And that varies uh, from countries to countries, regions to regions. Um, and there is a chance, or there's a, a trend actually, that there's increasing number of people suffering from uh, common mental disorders such as depression. And in fact, currently depression is the leading cause of disability globally. And also by 2030, the WHO expected that depression will be the leading burden of diseases globally. The, 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 um, the things about depression is that um, it is not just about genetics, not just about uh, lifestyle risk factor, but there are other social determinants that has significantly affects the uh, prevalence of depression. That include poverty, unemployment, stressful life events, et cetera, and also physical illnesses. So this is um, a figure that I really want to, uh, to highlight. And you can see this, this is a figure on the mental health services received in past year among US adults with any mental illnesses. So this is the health services among people that already uh, have a mental illness. And you can see the Asian populations have the lowest uh, health services utilization, even though they have mental illnesses in the past year in the US as compared to other ethnic group with the whites uh, or, or um, uh, two other racial groups tends to have a higher uh, services utilization. While the age does not seem to have a very significant impact, and females tend to use health services more. What's the unique uh, barriers or problems that has been faced by the Asian Americans um, in terms of um, the issues? Some of the work has been looking into the Asian traditional values on the family as a unit, uh, with its, each individual having a specific role and positions. And therefore, if someone is seeking help, uh, there may be more stigma as the individual health-seeking behavior might impact the whole family unit or the community unit, which can cause shame um, uh, um, of the whole family or, or the collective, uh, you know, the, the collective community. So uh, that brings back to um, <clears throat> why I would advocate for integrating mental health into primary care because the primary care physicians um, know the patient very well over time uh, and, and the accessibility is much higher with less stigmatizing uh, when people seek uh, mental health services in the primary care settings. They also may be more affordable and cost-effective um, and the physicians with a generalist approach can also look at the issues more holistically um, without being perceived um, as um, just addressing the issues um, um, uh, as a treatment model. The other benefits of having um, uh, mental health issues being managed in the, um, in the primary care settings include the fact that many people who have chronic diseases are also seeing the mental health uh, problems. If they can do it in the same context, that will be much more useful, including the more integrated treatment and the reduction of potential side effects that can be managed in the primary care settings. So um, go back to the uh, one of the uh, main topics of today. Um, so what are the non-pharmacological interventions that are evidence-based uh, that are relevant uh, or maybe more acceptable to the Asian populations? If you look at any psychological text or most of the publication, including the publication that I co-authored, um, psychological treatments, uh, mainly cognitive behavioral therapy, now seems to be the mainstreams of evidence-based psychological interventions. You see that when you collect 
57 studies. There are more than 10,000 populations, which shows that CBT is effective for depression and anxiety in different settings, including the primary care settings. Um, and they've shown that CBD interventions may be better provided by non-physician, and that could be the fact that they have more time to do with that. Uh, and many of them are social workers or psychologists, and tends to the fact that delivered in individual sessions tends to be better, uh, especially with motivation interviewing. And in this systematic review, they found that MBCD, uh, the people undergo MBCD has a reduced risk of depressive relapse with similar to taking antidepressants. So I, I think this is by far the strongest evidence to show that mindfulness-based content therapy can work quite well for people with recurrent depression and the effects are very similar to taking antidepressants. So the take home message, I think stigma is quite common in Asian population. That doesn't mean that we don't, we cannot do anything. There's a lot of things that we can do for them. And primary can maybe an approach to increase access to care. Um, and for depression, anxiety, and depressive symptoms, in addition to thinking about the medications, we can also think about things that is more accessible, including some of the non-pharmacological interventions, and some of them which might be more culturally acceptable, such as mindfulness yoga um, or Tai Chi that might be useful for certain populations.